Jordan Ron on ESPN.com. NFL Nation, uh, they've got a lot of storylines up there. Jordan, as you know, after covering the Eagles for a bunch of years, this fan base can jump on and off the bridge pretty quickly. Uh, but up in New York, the team has not been very successful recently. They're one in four. So give us the pulse of the Giant fan. After scoring 31 in Carolina last week, they feeling good or are they feeling like same old Giants at one and four? I think there is a little bit of optimism now, like whereas in the previous week there was not. I mean, that the offense maybe is on the right path a little bit, but they are one and four. I mean, it's funny, you, you know, you guys are sitting there saying, I don't know who the better team is. Let's take a step back, and I know you guys, it's been a rough start for the Eagles. But the Giants are a team that has lost 18 of their last 22 games. The Eagles are the defending Super Bowl champions. You know, like, uh, so <laughs> if we're talking about who the better team is and who's, like, the more talented roster and the better roster, it's hard for me to even sit here and imagine that the Giants are, are the better team. Now, are they, can they play better tonight? They're at home. They're on a Thursday night, short week. Yes, maybe the gap is not gigantic, but... I'm pretty sure that over the long haul, examining their rosters, that the Philadelphia Eagles have a better team. And if they were playing on a neutral field on a random Sunday, that the Philadelphia Eagles would be pretty, pretty decent favorites uh, against the New York Giants. Jordan, I want to ask you, you wrote the piece about Eli Manning. And, you know, obviously Odell, he had his things to say. Um, what is this team's ceiling with Eli Manning. I mean, do you look at this team and say, hey, if they had a young, exciting quarterback in here, they might be a better than one in four team? Uh, I don't know if they'd be better at this point. I mean, if you throw like a young rookie quarterback in there, it doesn't necessarily make you good. I, I don't, I can't imagine they'd be much better. I think it would give them a better future. I think that that would that would be where they would stand in that regard. But uh, yeah, I mean, with Eli Manning, here's the thing. And you mentioned Odell had some comments and just the general sense that I've gotten. I heard some things about players that they're just not full believers in Eli anymore. And that's really what that whole piece was about: the erosion of Eli. I mean, we've seen on the field, and I've, I've been covering this team since 2013, and for the most part, he really hasn't played particularly well. I would say 2016 was the outlier. Uh, actually, 2015, I'm sorry. Ben McAdoo's last year as the offensive coordinator. That year, Eli had a good year, and he really hasn't played that well the last few years. And there's been a lot of reasons for it and a lot of contributing factors, the offensive line, the running game, the injuries last year. But, I mean, it's just really been over an extended period of time, and it's really stretching into this year. He has six touchdown passes in five games. I mean, he's just not producing enough points. He's not making enough plays. And once you hear that the locker room has doubts in him, that's when you know that it's the beginning of the end, in my opinion. And I think that's where sort of where we're at with the Eli Manning situation and the Giants. Hey, Jordan, uh, it's Aton, brother. And a question for up, you, man? outside of cutting Eric Flowers, Good to hear from you, man. It's always good to hear your voice. What, outside of cutting Eric Flowers, does the Giants team do well? <laughs> cutting Eric Flowers. Well, they definitely have explosive playmakers. And Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham can take it to the house at any moment. But is that really that's... working? I mean, they're one and four. They are, and they're not getting, maybe making enough plays or getting enough opportunities to do it. I mean, you could look at it both ways. So... They haven't been doing that, but I will guarantee you there will be weeks this year where either Saquon and or Odell win the Giants games because they are still that good. They are still making plays. I mean, go look near the go look near the leaderboard of uh, yards from scrimmage and uh, receiving yards, and you'll see Saquon Barkley and Odell back. So these guys are still making some plays. Uh, is it enough? Probably not, but. Look, like I said before, the quarterback, they he hasn't been making enough plays. And so you can easily look at it as like he's holding them back. But they still have that going for them. Uh, I would also say the Giants' defensive front, uh, especially 
their front. They, they play a 3-4 now with Damon Harrison and uh, P.J. Hills, who's a nice-looking rookie, and uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, who's a good-looking second-year player. The Giants are pretty strong up front there, and they can stop the run. Now, I know their run defense numbers don't look great, and a lot of that is because, A, they can't stop the zone reads, and the quarterbacks have been pulling it and running it like crazy all over them. And, uh, you know, B, they've been hit on some sort of trick. It's just kind of played. But they're pretty good at stopping the run in the front of that defense. So. And they have some talent at the back. And, I mean, Janoris Jenkins is a good player. Uh, Eli Apple has been playing well. It's more like his, his uh, rookie year. And then Landon Collins. So there is definitely talent on the defensive side of the ball. Now, they have their holes. They have their weaknesses. Offensive line. Uh, their linebackers and coverage. Their uh, deep safeties. Uh, their return game has been, been an absolute disaster. Actually, probably has cost them a game, maybe even more, an opportunity to come back in another game. They fumbled away the, the final punt of the game. So, yeah, special teams is another problem that they've had. But uh, when you talk about strength, start you end really with Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham. Jordan, you talked about the Giants really haven't had much success recently. Eagles coming off a Super Bowl. But when you look at the matchups and you look at, you know, you mentioned the Giants' weapons, on our side of the fence, the Eagles' side of the fence, I see it as a potential perfect storm for the Eagles to get really p blown out tonight. I mean, they have Odell Beckham, they have Shepard, they have Barkley. Do you see the Giants really being able to take advantage of the Eagles inside the 20s and potentially having some big plays tonight, Eli getting the ball out quick and getting those weapons involved early and often and jumping out to a big lead against this Eagles team at home? I mean, you guys are giving the Giants offense a lot of credit. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> their only touchdown last week. I know they <laughs> don't lump me in. First. Don't lump me in with that, Jordan. You just told us they have explosive just, playmakers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here's Here's it's really my offense. concern for the Eagles over the Giants' credit. <laughs> here's, the th here's the thing with the offense, right? They can have success, but they've only been able to do it in really short spurts, aside from maybe against the Houston Texans. And if you can, do, you can just sit back there and play zone against them, which I would expect the Eagles to do all day. I mean, if they want to line up Jalen Mills against Odell Beckham one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to get me in big trouble, right? They're going to lose that battle pretty consistently. I think we can all agree on that. But you sit back in the zone, and if they can pressure with their front four, then that's how you stop the Giants' offense, and they really will not be able to sustain consistent offense. They might have stretches where they look good. They might have stretches where they make some big plays, where they make some plays. But if you can do that against this Giants team, and you can pressure with that front four against their offensive line, then you really shouldn't even be talking about the potential of getting blown out. Uh, I mean, the Giants scored 30 points once now in their last, what is it, 37 games? And they needed uh, yeah. they needed their, their wide receiver to throw a touchdown pass to their running back in order to make that happen. So, I, I mean, it's hard for me to sit here. And I know the Eagles have defensive problems, but it's just hard for me to sit here and think that the Giants offense is just going to go out there and light them up consistently over, you know, three, four quarters. Jordan Ron on ESPN.com covers the Giants NFL Nation here on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. Now, we asked this question before. Both teams, obviously, short week situation. Giants scored 31 last week, the Odell stuff. Uh, the Eagles lose at home. Do you think the Giants, after a 63-yard field goal, knocks them out after scoring 31, are, that it benefits them to play on the short week? Yeah, everything that just happened with the Giants benefits them right now. Uh, the fact that it's a short week and they can just put it behind them, they get to play at home. Uh, I, I think that is definitely a good thing for the Giants in this case. And, and you know, you listen to that locker room this week, and it's almost like they it was, listen to them talk, you would think that they they beat the Panthers. I mean, that that's how it sounds in that locker room. So I think that that can benefit them if they have some early success especially that it sort of carries over and their offense does gain more confidence in being able to do some things and do some things successfully so uh but at the same time and, and the other flip side at least 
I mean, Eagles are pretty banged up. They're definitely the more banged up of these teams. So I, I, the short week has to seem to benefit the Giants in that regard. Jordan, one thing that I think would concern Eagles fans and, and maybe even the team is as you laid out the sense of urgency that the Giants have at one and four. If you can speak a little bit more specifically to that in the realm of is anybody or who, maybe it's more than one person, is actually playing for their jobs this early in the season? Player, coach, coordinator, whatever you have in front, GM, whatever you have in front of you. Yeah, well, the thing is the Giants really turned over their new regime here, right? It's <laughs> So right. they, have a new co- they have a new coach, they have a new GM, uh, they have a new running back, they just signed Beckham long term, uh, all their their coordinators are, are new, so they have a pretty long leash, so, and you know what, they only have 20 out of the 53 players on their roster, active roster tonight, that was on the team at the end of last year, so there's really not many people to wow. choose from, I mean it's really, that's how new it is. But the reality is, I mean, I'm going back. To the well, that Eagles. helps the Eagles, doesn't it? I'm sorry, Jordan. I, I, I just think that that would that would help the Eagles because you don't have you may not be as inclined to make a change or adjustment in scheme, or maybe you don't have that fire lit under your ass if you know that you're signed or locked in. That that was my only point. Yeah, I mean, for the Giants, really, it's all about Eli. I mean, it's gonna. He's the one who's under under the pressure, right? He needs to play well because he thinks he's in the final year of his deal next year. He's 38 years old. If they have another terrible season this year, they're 1-4 right now. That's not very good. Uh, he's scheduled to count $23 million against the salary cap. you got to be a good – got to play really well to, be, to justify counting $23 million against the salary cap. So if anyone, it would be him. Uh, he's the only one really under a ton of pressure on this team because really, they, they, they turned over so many guys. But, I mean, they feel, trust me, the Giants feel the pressure because they all they do is keep hearing about them losing and not being good. They've lost 18 of 22 games. Think about that in the NFL. They're 4-18 and 18 in the NFL. The only team with the worst record during that span is the Cleveland Browns. I mean, so this team just desperately wants a win. They're dying to win because they're getting so fed up and so used to losing. Uh, real quick before we uh, get your thoughts on the game tonight, Jordan. You know, Odell, the interview with uh, Little Wayne and ESPN and <laughs> unauthorized. And yet, you mentioned that people in the locker room maybe aren't b- b- believing in Eli so much. But were people taking sides in that? Like that would split the locker room in terms of getting ready for a game tonight? Or how was that uh, Monday, Tuesday after this all happened? You know, the strange thing is, I, and people don't really grasp this, uh, Odell has the full support of that locker room. He's very well liked in that locker room. Uh, he addressed it, and basically his thing was, you know, sometimes when you say these things, there's everything taken out of context and blown up, right? And that's the approach that they took. And so most guys didn't even listen to it. Like, most guys didn't even, didn't even, I haven't even seen or heard the full interview, right? They maybe heard snippets or headlines, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so, to them, they just brush it off to the side. Like, you know, oh, they cook, they always do this. So they, they, you know, they harp on everything Odell says. They take it out of context. So, when you look at it from the Giants' perspective, they're able to brush that aside pretty quickly. And, if anything, I think it helps that locker room moving forward and into this game. Because they look at it as like sort of creating it. Oh, it's, it's it's the media or us against the world kind of uh, kind of like you know uh, approach. And so, if anything, I, I think it actually yeah. works to their benefit. And they'll use that. They said it galvanized them the other day. I mean, first of all, I don't know how much it really galvanized them, considering the interview ran while they were in warmups, so nobody really heard it anyway. But as long as they think that, yeah. it can serve as a benefit. Uh, real quick, give us your thoughts tonight. Uh, who do you like? Uh, I mean, like I said, it's hard. When you're sitting here watching this Giants team play all the time, it's hard to come out and be like, no, oh, this is the game they're going to play well, right? Because I've been burned so many times over the last two or three years, keeps continually saying that. Oh, like, oh, this, they're gonna, this is a perfect matchup for them. They're going to put it together. 
I still think their offense is going to be too inconsistent. As long as the Eagles pressure Eli Manning, and I think they should be able to, uh, they still have that good defensive front. Uh, Fletcher Cox should have a feast in, in the middle, especially if he's pat- matched up against Patrick Romame, their right guard, uh, and Brandon Graham and uh, Barnett. Guys, be able to, to consistently pressure Eli Manning. Enough where the Giants offense isn't able to put it together for long stretches, so and uh, I, I just think the Eagles are able to do just enough offensively, and, I, and I'm going to take the Eagles, but in a close one, like something like 24-20 or 24-21, right. somewhere, somewhere in that range. Don't mush so us. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Run on. The Don't mush us. I didn't give you anything. I like the strategy. <laughs> I just straddled up. <laughs> yeah. uh, is it three and a half? Is it, is it three and a half? Yes, uh, it's down the one and a half, you're, Jordan. You're a pro, Jordan. It's down you know the that. one and a half, Eagles. Oh, Jordan down, Ron on NFL down. Nation covers the Giants. It's down the one and a half. I picked the Eagles. Then, Mike's trying to break. I, we we got to shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can tell there's, uh, it's very difficult. There's a slight delay here. Can't you guys Minor figure this delay. out yet? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jordan. Hey, man, always appreciate the time. You got it, guys. Anytime.